Timothy Coggins was murdered on October 9, 1983. The killing was believed to have been racially motivated. The authorities in Georgia have reopened a cold case and arrested five people, including two law enforcement officials, in connection with what the local sheriff said was a brutal, racially motivated murder of a black man 34 years ago. The arrests were made on Friday, about seven months after new information emerged, said the sheriff, Daryl Dix of Spalding County, in Griffin, Ga, about 40 miles south of Atlanta. If the crime happened today, it would be prosecuted as a hate crime, he said at a news conference on Friday. The body of Timothy Coggins, 23, was found abandoned in a grassy roadside area of Sunnyside, Ga, on October 9, 1983, the sheriff said. He said his office conducted an exhaustive investigation at the time but the case had gone cold until March when new evidence surfaced. Frankie Gebhardt, 59, left, and Bill Moore Sr., 58, were charged with murder in the death of Mr. Coggins. Spalding County Sheriff's Office The Georgia Bureau of Investigation and the Sheriff's Office re-examined the case, the sheriff said, and told the Coggins family about the new leads in July. He did not provide details about the suspect's motivation, but called the crime heinous and pledged to prosecute those responsible and those who obstructed or hindered this investigation. He also did not describe how Mr. Coggins was murdered or the nature of the new evidence. He said more arrests were possible. Officials said Frankie Gebhardt, 59, and Bill Moore Sr., 58, were each charged with murder, aggravated assault, concealing a death and other crimes. Both men had extensive criminal records, the sheriff said. Georgia public records show that Mr. Gebhardt had been charged in the past with offenses including aggravated assault and simple battery, which landed him in prison. Mr. Moore has been incarcerated for burglary, theft and other offenses, records show. Gregory Huffman, 47, was charged with violation of oath of office and obstruction, officials said. Until Friday morning, Mr. Huffman had been a detention officer with the Spalding County Sheriff's Office, Sheriff Dix said. Mr. Huffman has since been fired, he said. Gregory Huffman, 47, left, Sandra Bunn, 58, and Lamar Bunn, 32, were arrested in connection to Mr. Coggins's murder. Spalding County Sheriff's Office Sandra Bunn, 58, and Lamar Bunn, whose age was not immediately known by the authorities, were charged with obstruction. The authorities did not say if the Bunns were related. Mr. Bunn worked at the Milner Police Department, Sheriff Dick said, adding that he was a police officer and that his fate would be up to the police chief. Department officials could not be immediately reached on Sunday. All five suspects are white, the sheriff added. It has been an emotional roller coaster for everybody that was involved, he said. This morning started the lifting of a burden. Heather Coggins, the victim's niece, was one of several family members who attended the news conference. She said that Mr. Coggins' his mother and stepfather, her grandparents, had died in the last two years, but that even on her deathbed, his mother still said Tim's name. She knew this day would one day come, Ms. Coggins said. The worst is over. In a telephone interview late Saturday, Ms. Coggins, 40, said her family was grateful to the authorities for pursuing the case. She said law enforcement officials had been extremely tight-lipped about it, even to them. We're waiting just like the world is to see what happened and what the details are, she said. Ms. Coggins said she was only six when her uncle was killed. Still, she said she remembered living with him off and on. He loved to dance, she said, and would play outside with her often. Soon after the murder, the police canvassed neighborhoods showing a picture of a body, which was eventually identified by a family member, Ms. Coggins said. For years, she said, her family knew next to nothing. We did and know if the people that were suspected of killing him were among us, she said. We did and know if it was the pastor of the church, the male man, whoever. Her family has never been to the site where Mr. Coggins was found and still doesn't know exactly where he was killed. She lamented that her grandparents were not here to see justice, but hopefully, she said, we are. Eliza Cho contributed research.